Hi folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I am going to be sharing a way to make flowers on your quilling comb. We're going to be making blue forget-me-nots. For the paper I'm using a deep blue from Cool Creations with a little bit of white, any brand will do. And then we're also going to need a medium brown for the center. This is actually a bronze but it's not very, very shiny at all. And then I also have a pale yellow. Like I said, most of this project is going to be on a quilling comb, so grab your favorite comb. It might look like this, it might be longer and thinner, and that's fine. I'm going to be using two different glues. I have my Elmer's white glue in my needle nose container, and then also Aileen's tacky glue. Uh, I'm going to be using my needle tool for a little bit of time. That's how I start my quilling comb projects. And then also, if you have one of these, this is really handy. It's, it's a reverse tweezers. You notice if you squeeze it, it actually opens. I'm going to be using this like a clamp later on. And then I'm also using a work board just to build my piece on as I go. And then something to mold my flower later on. I'm going to be using a quilling mold. First things first, we're going to build the flower petals. And like I said earlier, we're going to be using just a medium blue and then also white. This strip is from Cool Creations. It's an eighth inch wide and it's about 18 inches long, which is more or less what we're going to need for one petal, but in two different pieces. So if your strips are longer or a little bit shorter, that will be, that'll be fine. We're going to need our needle tool. And I did forget to mention this earlier. If you have a thin paintbrush handy or something small, we're going to be using that to mold our flowers. Um, they're also going to need that clamp of some sort. If you have one, if not, that's, that's fine. And then both types of glue for each, for the, just the petals here alone. So get out everything out of the way, make some room to work, make sure my glue bottle is actually working. And I'm going to start with the blue strip. And what I'm doing here, this is just a trick I have when you're starting on a quilling comb. I like to do about three turns on my uh, needle tool first, and that gives sort of an anchor for your quilling comb. This is not a necessary thing. Some people just start on their quilling comb. I just find that this sort of just gives a, a sturdy point so your paper doesn't fall off your comb as easy. Aim for somewhere in the middle. This isn't going to be a very large piece. So you don't need to worry about where exactly uh, you start, just in the middle. And you can see I had my tail to the back. I pull it through the next tooth, up and over, and down another tooth from the center on the other side. And you can see I like to hold it in place there with my thumb on both sides as I wrap it. And that just means that it's just not going to slide out again. And then from the back, I'm going to go one more tooth up and over, and one more tooth on the other side. At this point, I don't need to hold it with my thumb anymore because it's gonna, it has enough of a, of a wrapped grip there. It's not gonna move again. I'm gonna go one more tooth down, up and over, and one more tooth on the top. So just to recap, what you're gonna be looking for is your starting point in the center. It's kind of hard to see here on this angle, but there's one in the center where I started on the needle tool, and then I went one, two, three more teeth on either side. And at this point, you can turn your tool over and you're gonna to wanna to rip off the excess paper. My big tip for this is that you're gonna to wanna to get it as close to that last, that last loop as you can. We want our glue to all be towards the side of, of this quilling cone piece, if that, if that makes sense. So I pulled, I didn't let this rip right in the middle, I went all the way to the side, put a little bit of glue on the paper and hold it there for a second so that it gets a chance to, to set. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a white accent to this petal. Doesn't really matter how long this strip is, we're only gonna be using a few inches. I like to start with a torn edge because it does make it glue a little bit more smoothly. And I'm gonna try to get as close to the edge where I uh, glued that blue strip as I can. Again, I want all the, the glue to be right on the edge of this part of the, the petal, which is probably the hardest part of this whole project, really, is trying to get this right as close as I can between the teeth. It's not super, 
it's not hard at all. It's just one of those things. You just got to kind of wiggle it in there. And then after that sets for a few seconds, all you want to do is just wrap that white. We're not going to gain any teeth here at all on either side. We're just going to wrap it directly around once all the way and then around a second time and you're going to want to finish it right where you started again as close to the end as possible and just like with that blue strip a tiny bit of glue right at the tip so that it's again all that glue is as close to the edge as it can be that's what you're looking for again we didn't make it any bigger we just wrapped that whole entire piece twice with a strip of white and now uh, we're going to add another layer of blue. This is going to be exactly the same as we did with the white. Glue it as close to the edge as you can. And then we're going to wrap once and we're going to wrap twice. And we're going to finish it in the same way. After that second blue strip has gotten a chance to set on your quilling tool, you can carefully slide it off. And this is what it should look like on the side. Because we had all that glue that we used kind of positioned on one side, it's going to be really helpful for our next step. Grab whatever small tool you have, a wooden, a wooden skewer, like a barbecue skewer, or as it, like this little paintbrush will work and you're going to kind of bend it over very gently. Notice I'm not pushing on the top with my thumb there because I don't want to smush the top down. I'm just bending it over very slightly and pinching. That is the look you are looking for. If you aren't careful with your glue and start putting it towards the middle or wherever, it's going to make it not as smooth when you're trying to make this shape. That's why I kept stressing having the glue on one end. Your um, tacky glue will come in handy here. You're going to want to put a little bit between your fingers. If you have to hold it here, that's fine. It won't take too long to set. But if you do have some sort of small clamp or one of these pair of reverse tweezers, that can act as a little holder for you. And pretty much by the time you get your next um, petal done, this will have set. And you're going to need to make five petals for each flower. They're all going to be done exactly the same way. Next, we are going to make the center for the forget-me-nots. And this really couldn't be easier. It's made from a strip of four inches of brown paper and eight inches of your yellow. Your needle tool and the regular white glue will work fine. If you just have the tacky glue, that's fine too. And this is just a matter of rolling the brown strip from end to end without taking it off the tool. Once you get it all the way to the end, you're gonna want to glue the tail on and let that set. And then you are going to follow right after that with the yellow strip. And to make that transition as smooth as possible, try to start and end with uh, torn edges on both of your strips. And I like to try to get my second strip, one, you want to make sure it's rolling in the same direction, but also try to get it as close to the end point of my first strip as I can. And then you're gonna do the same thing, roll this up end to end, glue it uh, if you can while it's still on your tool. Mine started getting a little unruly here, so I ended up just taking it 
off of my needle tool and finishing it by hand. That works just fine too. And then glue the end when you're done. I decided to dome my centers just very slightly by pushing up from the middle with my finger. Not a necessary step, but I just think it makes it look a little bit more lifelike than a flat circle. After you have all five of your petals made, you can start gluing them together. And don't use nearly as much glue as I decided to use there. That was way too much. You really just need a tiny bit and I'm just going to sort of haphazardly put these five together in, it's like a star shape. And then I just find it easier to kind of get it started and then make it look a little bit more what I was looking for after they start sticking together. That way they're not shooting out all over the place, but it's not perfect, just a flower. And after you let that set for a few minutes, you can mold it if you'd like. If you do decide that you'd like to mold your flower, it'll just give it a little bit more of a lifelike shape. Not all flowers are perfectly flat, but for your project, maybe you do want more of just a flatter shape. Totally up to you. Uh, what I'm doing here is before that tacky glue has completely set, I'm going to put it on the underside of a quilling mold just to make the flowers curl up a little bit. It's not gonna be even on every side. Some petals are gonna be a little bit higher than others and that is just fine with me. Once your forget-me-not has dried completely in the mold, go ahead and take that out. And with a little bit more glue, you're going to set down the center, that brown and yellow piece that you have made. And that's all there is to your glue forget-me-nots. You can make a bunch of these because these do grow sort of in clusters. And just to add a little bit more variance, I decided to use a few different colors of blue to mine. I have a really pale blue, more of a kind of a cadet blue, like a grayish blue, and then that deep blue as well. And I think I like this one the best. I really like that color. They're all about the same size. They're gonna be about an inch and a half. Again, if your, if your quilling comb is not exactly the same as mine, you may have a variance in size and that is okay. You may decide you want to add another tooth on either side while you're weaving on your quilling comb to make these bigger. That is okay. This is just to get another tool in your toolbox of how to use your quilling uh, supplies in a different way. We're using the quilling comb and folding it over and adding that little strip of white Again, that is also optional. This is not exactly what forget-me-nots look like. They do have a little bit of white in them, but it doesn't go all the way around the petal. We're just being creative. So however you like to use your tools is fine. I just like to give you as many options as I can. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to leave me any comments down below. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to respond. As always, like and follow because you wanna make sure that you're notified next time I make a new quilling video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.